Well, we can now speak to Gerald Fierstein, who's Senior Vice President at the Middle East Institute. He previously served as U.S. Ambassador to Yemen during the Obama administration. Gerald, thanks very much for being with us. How much involvement Great. has the U.S. had in Yemen up to now? Well, since the uh, since the beginning of the uh, civil war and then the Saudi intervention in early 2015, the U.S. has supported uh, both the legitimate government of Yemen, uh, the government of Abdurrabo Mansour Hadi, uh, and the Saudi-led coalition, and has provided limited uh, technical and uh, and other kinds of support to the coalition in carrying out its military activities in Yemen. And that, of course, is what the president has said he wants to end. The war in Yemen is a proxy war, a Saudi-led coalition, as you mentioned, backing the officially recognized government and Iran backing the Houthi rebels. What announcement is this? Uh, what reaction is this U.S. announcement going to have? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. President Biden said, even on the campaign trail last year, that he was going to take this step if he were elected. Uh, and so it was anticipated. And Secretary Blinken also, in his confirmation hearings in the Senate last week, uh, reiterated that the United States would take steps to end its support for uh, the Saudi military intervention. And so uh, and so that is something that we've expected. Uh, and the fact that he took the step today is not a surprise. The State Department has also announced a new U.S. envoy to Yemen, Tim Lender King, a very experienced diplomat. What do you make of that? Well, actually, of the two parts of the announcement, the, the cutoff of support for offensive Saudi operations and the appointment of Tim Lender King as the uh, U.S. Special Envoy for Yemen, the appointment of Tim Lender King, in my view, is the more important step. Uh, it will hopefully help Martin Griffiths to revitalize and push forward on the political resolution of the conflict, something that Martin, as you know, has been working on for several years. We've got uh, a, a joint declaration that Martin has been trying to negotiate with the Houthis and with the government uh, that would call for, among other things, a ceasefire. Uh, if the U.S., by lending its weight to the U.N. effort, can help push that forward, I think that that's going to be an extremely important and positive step. And finally, Yemen has been described as the world's worst humanitarian crisis. What can the U.S. do now to help civilians in the country? Well, there are several things that they can do immediately. One is to reverse a decision by the Trump administration to end uh, our support for humanitarian operations in the northern part of the country, the country that part of the country that's controlled by the Houthis. Uh, we can also uh, press the Saudis and the Emiratis also to step forward and restore their assistance. And then the other extremely important step is to reverse an unfortunate decision by the Trump administration at the very end of its uh, of its tenure to impose uh, sanctions on the Houthis as a foreign terrorist organization that's made it much more difficult and much more complicated to get humanitarian relief supplies into the part of the country where the vast majority of Yemenis live. Gerald Fierstein, former U.S. ambassador to Yemen, thanks very much for making the time for us. Pleasure to be with you.